Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Core Gaming Podcast, episode 22. I'm your host, Jay Supa, and joining me once again is the one and only, Macardia. What's going on, Mac? Episode 22, take two, on Tuesday. On Three Tuesday, two, two, right. Two, two, two. Coming to you yes. a little later than usual, although we've had a weird schedule of late anyway. Uh, but that's neither here nor yeah. there. Joining us from the uh, bay is the luchador himself. Sovereign, how's it going? Yeah, 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 it's nice. It's nice and sunny on the bay today. It actually does I'm look not really, really sunny. It, it, it was snowing today, but nonetheless, um, yeah, it's a nice day in the background. So, hanging out on the dock, just enjoying the sun. Very cool. At, very cool. Uh, what seven o'clock at night in the middle of winter? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. There's no way it's that bright if you are outside. No. <laughs> um, and our friend from across the pond, maybe the very pond that Will is at, he needs no introduction. More Q of Tamriel. Hey, but it's about me, More Q here on episode two of the gaming podcast known as The Core. And I actually took the liberty of doing some research today into the number 22. Would you like to hear some of the facts? Sure. You said two. Okay, 22 is roughly the number of legs on a hind quarter. Of a centipede, like hind quarter, like the wow. the back twenty five percent. Yeah, but, here? but funnily enough, because it's a quarter, it is the same as the the right, you know, the other hind quarter and the front quarters. And twenty two is also three cents less than a quarter. Other you guys facts, are full that's also of true. amazing <laughs> facts. This week. Um, yeah. Also, great stuff. Twenty two is the number of trees that. Um, Littered around my garden. You have a garden? <laughs> really? Yes. No, you don't. What we're going with? Uh, twenty-two is a palindrome. Well, because it's two-two or two-two. Well, I have Boom. two trees. That's a good point. But for the for the fact, I would say it's twenty-two. So okay. that's that's another one. And the third and most fun fact is twenty-two is the number of stitches that hold. My buttons on my boxer shorts, so they don't wow. fall open. Those are twenty-two impressive stitches. I, I had to put them all there because they, my boxer shorts recently broke, allowing me to be free and easy. <laughs> okay. And nobody wants that. No. Well, de definitely not the person who shares the bedroom with me in the oh. morning when oh, it's man. too hot and people kick off the covers <laughs> and okay. lay there. Eagle, eagle yeah. spread. I don't know what that's like. Shots. I forget heat. <laughs> yeah, it's too cold. But um, I can also make up another one if you want a fourth. Fact. Oh sure, might as well yeah. end on the okay. even number. Um, Twenty-two is actually the number of passes thrown in the last Super Bowl game. No. To no. win the match. <laughs> hey, guess what, guys? You what? know. I'm a big fan of the Super Bowl. 22. And, uh, That's 10 more buttons when, uh, than Mike has on his mouth. I'm from Seattle, so uh, like Seahawks are my team. So when I take a test, I like to wear my Seattle jersey because I'll know I'll pass when I shouldn't. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. You should have that right, your driving it. test. Wow. Yeah, I should have. I did pass when I shouldn't. Wait, what? Uh, it was something we were talking about in TeamSpeak, which you can join us in... The information is below the stream. I was on TeamSpeak yesterday, Smite. John. Where were you? Um, watching you guys stream well, Smite. Because, yeah, yeah, we missed I the was, show, but you guys were streaming. That yeah, huh? was fun. Yeah. Yes. We needed to do something. We we're all just hanging out. Yeah, it looked, so we might it looked as well like it's not me, fun. because as I mentioned, I fixed my underwear. Not last night while you were mm. playing Smite. That would so, be kind of weird. No, I fixed it before then, so I wasn't hanging out. That was That was the point. Oh, mm. uh, okay. But alas, I feel <sighs> we have rambled for far too long, almost All ass. 22 minutes. Yeah. Perhaps uh, we should move on to... Yeah, this is true. Oh, yeah, we have a show. We can't yeah. just make puns. What? We, we do things. No, really? Okay, go for it. 
Ah, uh, yeah, the the donate thing circus for us. Um, but like we like to do here, we're gonna go right into the news. So, Paradox, the people that make the great game Crusader Kings Two. Uh, their CEO, Frederick Wester, says, Game of Thrones is the one license that I'd consider uh, for the strategy game studio to pick up. So, for those of you that don't know, there are currently three Game of Thrones titles on the market. An RPG, and an RTS that no one talks about because they suck, and then the Telltale game that recently came out, story-driven, not really what I'd like to see in a Game of Thrones game, but still, very good. Um... Would you guys like to see a RTS for Game of Thrones from a wide-known publisher? I actually I like, as one of the mods to Civilization V, is to download a House of Game of Thrones. Mod. Yes, the Westeros mod? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great but, mod for Civ V. I mean, I guess, I'm not a massive fan of RTSs, but a Game of Thrones one, if it was better than Civilization Beyond Earth, would be okay. So like a turn-based strategy? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. RTS. Well, and it depends upon how it is. It doesn't have to well, be turn-based. Some RTSs aren't real necessarily time. turn-based because RTS is real-time. Like their yeah. armies are moving while my armies are moving. Dun, dun, dun. This could be cool. Oh, I have no idea what an RTS is then. Having a bunch of families. I mean, yeah, bunch of clans running around. A, bunch, running around. a bunch of families. You tell where Will's from? <laughs> like a gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey, I look at the Lannisters. They're fucking yeah. themselves. Oh my god. Yeah. It's only the Targaryens. It's just that they were all dead. Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, not except for that all. Daenerys one, she won't shut the fuck up. And that other one, Mac, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, spoilers. Allegedly. You guys don't know shit. Mm. Oh, talking about Game of Thrones, I actually read a uh, Kotaku, oh, no, Polygon, saying that. People who have read the books may actually be surprised when it comes to season five of the show because people I'm already who don't fucking die, surprised. People who don't die in the books are going to die in the show. Shit's already got. That's oh, already yeah. happened. But I know George R. Martin come out and said that it's going to happen, so it's in recent news. So shut the fuck up. I'm just saying. Oh, I don't care about George R. R. Martin because he's dumb and won't finish the damn book. I know. Jesus fucking Christ. Christ he's never. He's never going to finish it. Shit. He's going to die first. He is. It's going to happen. Why would he rather be TV? TV is inherently shittier. Well, TV is probably making him a books. lot of money. Yeah, it is yeah, but he, he would make that money money. anyways, plus book money. It's and like... he, he actually started yeah. in Hollywood. It's okay. He used to okay. write... Um, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure he doesn't necessarily need more money. He did Tales oh. of the Crypt episodes be. and um, Twilight Zone. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah, but more specifically... Don't you want a Game of Thrones that's similar to, say, Warcraft or Starcraft? Yeah, no, I, I want a Game I'm of Thrones starring, game you know? that and doesn't suck. Yes. It's I'm something starring. that's I'm, almost like Risk involved I'm, in it, too. I'll, I'll yeah. That way you're taking over different areas of the map with your armies. Mm. To yeah. more, so I'm just gonna pile all my like characters on the, the Iron Islands and just build up. Is that if you if you just have it as an RTS, then you lose a lot of the stuff that Mitch makes a Game of Thrones, which is all the political intrigue and all that kind of shit. Well, no, that's and, you don't lose that when it's a strategy game. Like you can still do that kind of stuff. I think you lose that more yeah. if you make it an open world RPG. Hmm. Yeah, opinion. but you could sit there and incite you know, revolution within a given country or yeah. a different given area so that you don't necessarily have to fight for it, mm -hmm. but you can send your spies in to incite rebellion. Uh, from as long pit. as they have the option where I can torture people and remove the penises. Yeah. And as long yeah, as that, you can kill off there. the main character in the first five minutes. Of course. Yeah, like, you can't, what like, else would you do? people are just going to die in, in, like, an RTS. You can't actually be like... I really like this character well, I'm going to yeah. love. Well, no, that's not true, because you can hero. have, like, the heroes. That's yeah. what Dota and MOBAs all spawned from, is the hero characters. Yeah, the heroes RTSs. that were in Warcraft 3. Uh, yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, you gotta love the heroes, you know, like, um... What's like that? Arthas? Um, no, I don't remember his name. What hero? He, he's like a, you know, he was a lord of... The greatest American hero? 
Captain America? I'm just making I'm, out, I'm making a joke. Yeah, it was the, that was, I was making a Mario. joke about the end of the first episode of Game of, Thro- of the Game of Thrones Telltale game. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. That poor little kid. Mm, poor little kid. In the uh, face. Oh, Will has, Will still hasn't finished it. No, he has. hasn't. So no spoilers. He's got, it on, he's got it on a fucking phone and he still hasn't finished it. How much more casual can you be than having a game on a phone and not finishing it? Like, <laughs> I barely play it. What do you expect? Could yeah. nobody play? You need to play for two hours and you completed it. All right, I'll do it. You know what? Yeah. All right, all right. Moving along, uh, Mac. Even though it's going to pain you to do so, once you grab the next article, because I didn't realize I put that second. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, Dota 2 hit 1,075,464 concurrent users this weekend. This is the largest number of concurrent users in Steam history, but nowhere near League of Legends 5 million. This could be due to Dota's two, uh, Dota 2's Year Beast Brawl event, which would activate at random times throughout the day and had a 10-minute window in which you had to queue for a game in. Uh, the first night, this basically DDoS uh, or DDoS um, Dota 2 servers and uh, brought the network down, but has been getting better each day. So, what is this Beast Brawl event? Okay. For those yeah. who don't. So, you know, we tried Strife, right? And you guys yeah. remember how yeah. we did something in the jungle and then the big gorilla charged down the lane? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to do anything in the jungle. And each team gets a big creep that charges down a lane. And you can spend ability points that you can buy. Or if you bought the Crystal Maiden Arcana, you were given. Or you get by playing matches, but nowhere near as much as you can buy. Um, Basically, you spend those on upgrading or using abilities with the Beast. So it's like a twist on the normal game mode. So... Is the beast always there, or can it be killed? It can be killed, and it's only there. It spawns like every five minutes. Or something so like it's that. sort of, kind of like the C, but less ob- obviously less often, but sort of like the siege engines of Smite. Yeah, in, yep. Uh, it's kind of like the siege engine. Okay. And, okay. But you can. So it's you like can, a huge beast but, that can just like can wail on towers and. Yeah. Hmm? You can what? So you can you can spawn it yourself. It will spawn on its own. And it will go to a random lane, but you can spend points to teleport it to a specific area. You can spend points to tell it to attack okay. a specific target. You can spend points to cause it to heal in an AoE, give it double damage. Uh, it used to have an Aegis of the Immortal, which would cause it to respawn if they did kill it. Um, but that was kind of broken, so they got rid of that. Um, and so by by spend points, what do you mean by spend points? There I'm not is... that familiar with. So like an in game currency sort of thing? Game? Yeah, well, or... they, they implemented a new currency for this. So people have what's okay. called ability points, and you spend those. You get ability points by playing games, um, like just normal Dota 2 games. You, you'll get, I think, 25 or something for completing a game. If you're in a game with someone that bought a certain set for a character, you get more points if you win. You also get points. They give you like a daily bonus of so many points, but that changes each day as to how many you get. Sometimes, like it was seventy seven thousand five hundred today. The other day it was three thousand five hundred. So it's kind of pay to win. Not yeah. gonna lie, um, the winning team gets sets for their heroes. It's cool. I don't know. I I have a video that shows me play through a match with Nameless Mara and. Billy, up on our YouTube okay. channel. So, if cool. you want to know more and you want to know how exactly how it works, head over to youtube.com slash no sht gaming channel and you can take a look. It's only like 22 minutes long. I will say that he... those are right. the fastest Dota 2 matches I've ever played. Because of the giant oh, thing cool. beating the crap out of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we basically just coming. charged down mid. Like, it's like he was at a storm. I mean, yeah, it's like he was at a storm getting the Dragon Knight. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. kind of like that. And we basically, like, we just go straight push lineups. Like, fuck normal meta and shit. It's just pick push heroes and fucking charge down mid. There's a guy in the Defense of the Patients <laughs> guild that actually beat it with a crew in nine minutes. Well, that, I mean, that's the point of these kind of game modes, is that they actually develop their own meta. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I wonder if it would actually make Dota more popular, too. Just if, because if it's, if it's an I can get game a match mode. done in 
you know, 15 minutes instead of having to spend an hour. Well, I don't know. Now yeah, that... You know... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, I'm kind of agreeing with Will here because, I mean, sometimes, like, when I play... One of the reasons I like Smite is because I don't always want to play a Conquest. Maybe I just want to play, like, a quick... Um, uh, assault is usually pretty quick, or, like, an Arena is... You... So, yeah. like, you know, sometimes I just want to play, like, a quick game and not have to spend, like, 40, 30, 40 minutes in the game. Well, I mean, so. Dota 2 does have all random deathmatch, which is, like, your arena. Um, and oh, it does also, it? I didn't know yeah. that. And it also has, like, mid-only and shit like that, which is, like, your assault. Yeah. Um, assault. Okay. Yeah. So it does have modes that are kind of similar to that, but you're right. I mean, this this is a much faster mode. Maybe It's maybe more forgiving, but the community overall really didn't like it, especially because of that whole DDoS situation, but since they've changed a few things, like before, if you wanted to play normal Dota during the 10 minute window that the queue was open to join the Year Beast event, you couldn't mm -hmm. do it unless you played a ranked game because this mode's obviously not in ranked, but you couldn't queue for a normal match at the same time. Now they have a whole separate queue for the mm. Beast. Like, there's a whole different yeah. button. Uh, okay. I think I think people who play Dota and League of Legends, I think they especially play those games for the, you know, the the, the actual main game. I don't think you know. Yeah. I don't think loads of people play Aram when they play League of Legends and stuff like that. So, um, you know, possibly it would bring more casual players to playing Dota if it was a, a relevant mode that stayed. But I, if since it's come on through an event, I can't imagine it will ever be no. a regular thing. So, uh, and, and like I said, I think the community at large play Dota and yeah. League of Legends, especially for the actual, you know, the three lane kind of game. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of. It would be nice to have a game mode that you can play in 15 minutes because well, there are those. You don't always have yeah an hour. There so are those. There was an option. Yeah, but it's not quite the same game, you know? No. It's like, a, you know, having an option for a quick con conquest in Smite would be nice. Well, they do, have the, but they have the game of the days for Smite, yeah. where you can have Sometimes. conquest where you've got full money, and you're yeah. already level 20, and you can win in two minutes. Well, I mean, if you, <laughs> if you play on a different Custom, level right. of Dota, and you pick a certain strategy, there is... Such thing as a push strategy that just goes all out, tries to win before the thirty minute mark. So yeah, yeah. it just sounded like this was a nice, nice no, event. No, it, it it's interesting. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's it's really tailored to the new hero who we'll talk about in my uh, my gameplay section because I've been playing a lot of her. But why don't we head on to the next news topic? Who wants to grab it? Okay, a YouTube channel leaks that the upcoming PS4 exclusive, The Order 1886, is roughly five hours long. Hmm. Oof. Play Me Through uploaded a full playthrough to their channel and it appears that half the time in game is taken up by cutscenes that cannot be skipped. Is uh, five hours long enough to learn how to play the game? It's not EA, so <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> If you're EA. Um, yeah. So yeah, $60 wow. title, five hours long, three and a half of which, no, two and a half of which are cutscenes. That's actually worse than paying like $30 to get that stupid Metal Gear Solid playthrough mm -hmm. beginning well, thing. Hold on, this that is, is a, worse, a shooter, right? It's a third person. Kind of, it's a third person kind of shooter, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's a shooter based in 18... 1886? I'm sorry, yeah, it's going to take you five hours to reload. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, because it's, it's not... you got to like, shove the stick no, down No, it's not exactly like that, though, is it, though? <laughs> yeah, isn't it, like, steampunkish? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, like a reimagined ver version of 1886. So they've got, like, you know, blaster weapons and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and yeah. futuristic kind of yeah. shit, so... Um, I'm just giving the 1886 uh, part of the joke. Oh, yeah. no, Giannis, you're trying, you're trying to be um, funny. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It Don't is worry. your birthday, so we should oh, we should say happy birthday, Will. Oh, yeah. That's happy birthday, Will. Yeah. Happy birthday, Will. Happy birthday, Will. Happy birthday, Will. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
about the Happy birthday, 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 He's as old as it is to play a game of Dota. He is older than the gameplay in Order 1886. Let's yeah. just say that. Yeah. Yes, yes, much. I may well, have been born in 1886. My yeah, niece, who was recently born, is older than the gameplay in. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> kidding. All right. It's kind of bad when, it's like, really you're like, game. supposed to be this big title and, like, you have less gameplay than a Call of Duty. Like, yeah. yeah oh, that's true. I'm wondering what. What is the is going to be the actual like the, thing. the catch? What what's going to yeah. make me want to play this is, game? Is, is there is there like a the cuts game. a PV? Is there like a PVP mode then? But which is actually meant yeah. to take up your time. I've got a no, I don't remember a multiplayer now because it's all single player, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. You're you guys... literally not even getting ten dollars an hour of gameplay. You're getting less than that. Well, that's what I want to ask. So Do you guys think that like price and like our investment in the game should be linked in any way. This sounds like it would be like a $20 DLC, maybe. Well, that's the thing is, though, is like, you know, Destiny, you know, say it costs $500 million, mm -hmm. but they are going to span it out over 10 years, supposedly. You know, maybe it, it did still cost them the price of a $60 game to get this game out there, even if it's short. You know, films put, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in to have an hour and a half of something. Okay, they do pay... Yeah, but then you go to the movie give... theatre, you're paying yeah. $8, not 60 yeah, Eight. True, but, but then... Movie theater but, then the, but, but then maybe the, you know, there are 100 million it's people watching a game. Sense. I mean, watching a film when there aren't... There's maybe only 10 million people don't buying the game. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's only five hours long. <laughs> I don't know. Look, these games, I mean, like, that. that is not... Okay, so it's five hours long with cutscenes... Yeah. No, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, five hours yeah, with, the cut with the cutscenes. So, which and means cutscenes take about half. Out. So, let's say two and a two half and hours half of gameplay. That is that is about That's an a episode of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah, an episode of Game of Thrones has that. And there's six episodes of that coming. For 20 bucks. Or 30, whatever it was. For 20 bucks. Yeah. 30 or whatever, yeah. I mean, Ouch. <laughs> it, just, it just seems way too much for... How much? Look, I mean, like, look at the Elder Scrolls game, stuff like that. I mean, like, are are like Fallout Three. I mean, I bought Fallout Three for sixty bucks, and I'll still load up that game. Like, yeah. right. So I mean, yeah. they either have to deliver yeah. on an, a, a really damn good reason and make you want to keep story. replaying this game, but I can't imagine what it's going to be. I mean, let's be honest. This just well, I mean, falls in with the current gen of consoles. This is how. Developers seem to be putting games out there. This seems to be overhyped, underperforming, and well, over. I don't even know if it's console necessarily. It's just, I mean, because when I think when I think of like big console games that are like you know, I obviously have like Call of Duty, but like especially with shooters and stuff. Like, but Call of Duty has more than two and a half hours of actual gameplay yeah, like in their campaigns. Six, yeah, Plus, they have the huge multiplayer, so it's right. like. Yeah, yeah so it's like for your money. this just seems but, weird. But, but Call of Duty on the on the bright side, when you go to trade it in after your five hours of <laughs> gameplay, you'll get you'll maximum get a lot of money. return. Yeah, yeah, you, you get the maximum value that you're ever going to get. Yeah, because you yeah, can I should five be hours able hours after you buy it. Yeah, just yeah, I shouldn't be able to get off work on a weekday. Get off work. Get the game, take the game home, and beat it with enough time to return it same day. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, <laughs> I've done Skyrim playthroughs that I've streamed for longer than five hours and not yeah. done anything. Yeah. So, yeah. I've seen Skyrim playthroughs where they've played for five hours and not done anything. Exactly. Like, I don't think this is necessarily a console issue. I think this is just a bad developer issue. Like, no, I, I just, I just, I meant that by saying that a lot of console stuff has not been performing and like this has been really hyped because it's a PS4 exclusive you know this has been really hyped and yeah and stuff yeah. And it doesn't sound like it's going to live up to 
any kind of exploitations, you know, maybe the idea is amazing, you know, the steampunk world, you know, yeah. there aren't actually that many steampunk oh, games out there. Yeah, steampunk anyways. Yeah, but it is, you know, it is quite a big internet phenomenon, but Second yeah. Life, there's a lot of stuff of steampunk on yeah. Second Life. Usually really rolling cool. around sex as well. Has some... Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Of course it does. Yeah. Maury's involved. Thanks, yeah. sir. Pe people just love steam-powered dildos. What Why not? Say, I was about to say, I, I bet it's just like a steam-powered fuck good. machine, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. But, like, I don't understand, it's like, I don't understand the whole internet's fascination Dangerous. with steampunk. It's like, uh, so inefficient. It's the same as Neko and... Yeah, I think it's like stuff. an otaku thing. Like, I love anime, therefore I love steampunk. I don't know. Yeah, there are some pretty famous um, anime steampunk stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just my it my opinion of game. things. It may, the well, spaceship runs on steam, but it's five it's hours long. It's not short. It's not yeah. enough, though, is it? If you're not, you know, would you want to buy Charlie that? No, sixty dollars for five hours of gameplay. It's just there's no value in it, really. Even if it's even if it you know runs at 120 frames per second at 4K <laughs> resolution or something, you know? Yeah, what's no, the value? There's no value in it. Yeah. Who cares? I agree. Like Sorry. take Smite. <laughs> yeah, because I bet you there's game. like the replay Even value is about one percent. Thirty dollars. You know I'm old as crap because you know I'd be okay with two hundred and fifty six colors, and you know, I was it three twenty by two fifty six. I mean, as I long as it's a good freaking game. <laughs> I remember playing Centipede. I, don't, I think there's only five colors in that game. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah I mean, like I don't think I own a game that I can beat in like two and a half hours, like. Except for like maybe sure some, you like, do solitaire, yeah, oh. yeah. I guess there's that. <laughs> Except for sometimes, and I'm like, Mine's damn it, I fucked up. Hey, I Mac, I know, start. I know something you could beat in two and a half hours. Oh no, no, let's go the wrong way. <laughs> Chafing. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, no, it's just, hey, it, we, sh we should it discuss does... that. So, how no, long has been your longest masturbation session, and was it so? <laughs> like, like, are we talking about, like, just single, like, just, like, until, yeah, like, one straight. orgasm, or just, like, are, like, I've just been doing this all day because yeah, I, like, I got the flu, and I'm... Oh, like, you're like me. Like, sometimes I'll sit up at night watching porn, right, and I can sit there from, like, 11 p.m. to, like, 4 p.m. still on the same shot. But are you still, are you, like, are you constantly going, or, not, like, is not, it just... I mean, not vigorously, because... <laughs> not vigorously. He ran out of gas. <laughs> yeah. You need a second okay. wind. Plus, you need the. You're gonna get chapped, dick. Plus, plus, I need the mouse. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I need my mouse hand back to change scenes. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit it's of a quite gap. Quite a workout. Yeah, exactly. Quite the workout. Probably burned quite a few calories. But honestly, you know, that's that's what you know. Remember when I told you like good training for your tongue is like eating yogurts without a spoon. Yeah. I unfortunately and, like, remember that. If you masturbate for hours and hours, it means you can improve your performance during sex because you can you can withhold it longer. <laughs> so you can pleasure your woman friend longer. Oh man! Oh boy. Um, Will, speaking of you know, back when old games were just back, back good in the day, games. I don't know. Which was a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. It was a Wednesday. It was um, a Wednesday. Why don't you grab the next Wednesday. topic? Speaking of Wednesdays, a new D and D game is well. It has been announced. It's being developed by Enspace and Digital Extremes in partnership with Wizards of the Coast. The game is titled Sword Coast Legends, and that's so hard not to say Sword Art Online. Mm -hmm. um, I know, right? <laughs> Sword Coast Legends has a team uh, featuring the director of Dragon Age Origins and members who have worked on Baldur's Gate and... Neverwinter Nights. I know, apparently so games, is it Dungeons and Dragons Sword Coast Legends, or is Sword Coast Legends I'm just gonna it? I'm going to guess it's Dungeons and Dragons. Kind of like the Gold Box games, they all started with Dungeons and right. Dragons, and then, and then you add whatever it was title. afterwards. Yeah. 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 So, but a lot of times they became known as like Baldur's Gate or Neverwinter Nights. Right, and Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights are both Dungeons and Dragons games, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. So, Along with the... Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. These are the good ones. And we mean Neverwinter Nights, not Neverwinter, that real shitty MMORPG that they put out. Correct. But that's still the yeah. same no. it's concept, still the isn't it? Same. No. Yeah, it nowhere is. near. No, it is. What? It's still based on Neverwinter, though. It's based on the story arc. Yeah. yeah. Stor but 
the way the game played was not nothing. Game. Oh right, no, not that <laughs> no, no, game. No, no. I have nothing in common. We're good. No, yeah, they no, had the story nothing in common. I have yeah. never played D and D. Oh my I god! I I can say well, I have now. Not that I haven't wanted to. I've always been. I've always wanted to at least try you know, the whole pen and paper thing. But I don't know anyone that does it. I did a session with folks the from guys. the community. Yeah, I haven't done it in so long. But that's all right. I remember them setting that up, but yeah, I wasn't. Well, Will, that was a children. fucking project. Yeah, yeah for children. You have children, yeah. Will, so. I know. I know. Setting up. So you, the teach them, pass sheet. on the legacy. Is like you know, a oh, fucking four honestly, hour process. We, we need, paper, we need to, to write our own role play podcast. That'd nope. Be amazing. We do. Really? No. Uh, yeah. yeah. Come on. You, I'm not role playing can, shit with you, Maury. But we can Nothing. do what we can all do, like. Nothing. Axe, no. and I will be like a night elf woman. No, like with a alluring. Catholic no. schoolgirl outfit. Yeah. No, wandering I'm, the streets I'm late at night. Like, like a two inch tube skirt, which is like made out of black leather and like ripped at the back as well. Why, like, why, why stop at leather? Why, why not like black dragon wing? Come on, at least yeah. kind of lore friendly. Yeah, at least because be lore friendly. Shit. Who, who's going to want to seduce someone who's covered in black dragon wing? Fuck. She probably was probably a freak in bed. She'd probably break your dick off. It's great. Exactly. I think Mari's point is proven. Anyway. I'll be a lesbian. Be excited for the D and D games. If you go back back in the day, pick up DOS box. Yeah. go and play some of the German. The Gold Box series. Dust box. So hopefully it's a shout back kind of like old stuff. Um Divinity. Some crazy. See, I say DOS box, and my Xbox is like, "What? Are you, what what's up?" <laughs> it's just totally no, it's just, not you. Yeah, Stop it listening. Just, it just says "Guten Tag." <laughs> Guten Tag, Makaria. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, All right. Well, that's cool. There's some great D&D games from back in the day, and I'm trying to remember. If I think Baldur's Gate is on the iPad now. Yes, enhanced. Yep. Like they redid it. Yep. <sighs> so. Fucking iPad. Well, it may be on Steam, too. It is on Steam, too. You can go play and play some of the old games. And oh, FYI, they're, they're also making cheap. great strides into Hearthstone on the phones. Great strides? Good. Strides. They're about to run. They don't have it on Windows Phone, so... They don't have it no, on They don't have anything either. on Windows Phone. No offense. Nobody they... has a Windows Phone. What's the point? Yeah. Only Macardia. The user base is We're all a dying one. species. Where yeah. the fuck is my phone? Um, who wants to grab the next topic? That who you gonna call? To all uh, of I do. Systems. Me, Mac. All right, Mac. That's all you, bro. Okay. All right. Bethesda has announced that they will hold an E3 press conference. For the past few years, the big stage has only featured Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, and Electronic Arts. Uh, known games Bethesda is working on are Doom 4 and F2P shooter Battlecry. Not much for a big stage press conference, so what could be in store for us this June 14th? Fall 4 confirmed! <laughs> no. Okay. I added no, that, I, but... I, I think they picked up the rights to Bioshock. If they make a Bioshock game, I'm going to be so pissed. I think they're going to make Halo 6. <laughs> we all know Halo 5 is going to be a massive fail, no. so Bethesda are working on Halo 6. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about the, the Bioshock thing. That might... Well, no, I'm only saying that because Bioshock, I think, was pulled from Steam. Bioshock 2. Yeah. yeah. Is that Infinite? It, I don't... It was, but then they fired the whole team. That's well, not, let's say it's not Infinite now because it's removed. Right. Yeah. Dude, Dude, come on, guys. Can, can no. we just... If we all say Stay Fallout 4 enough, it has to come true. Well, well sure. all right. So... Yeah, let's, they're going to skip Fallout. Is it going to be Fallout or, based on the sales of... Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim will it be the next Elder Scrolls title? If we go with what their past like order has been, it's always been Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Elder Scrolls. Well, technically it hasn't because yeah. they only made the two Elder of the Scrolls, Fallout Elder games Scrolls, with it, which is four. New Vegas was just a big DLC. And I don't even count that as like like Elder Scrolls has been coming out since the eighties or nineties. Okay. So, well, well, here's the, here's the thing, years, though, is they've had a they didn't acquire the Fallout franchise until later. So then I they agree. acquired. So then they started doing yeah with Fallout Three, and then like Fallout Three ran on the same engine and stuff. That, but it was like, Fallout uh, Three, Oblivion, Oblivion, was on. 
New Vegas. No, Oblivion, Skyrim. then Fallout 3. Yeah. Oh, really? Because Oblivion came yeah. out when I was in, like, the seventh Fall, grade. Fallout ran like, on the first Oblivion's game I bought. Engine, I believe. Yeah, Fallout 3 was on Oblivion's engine, so that's why I was really looking to Fallout 4. I'm like, man, if they can, you know... It was like follow. It was like Oblivion's engine, just a little bit. I think streamlined a little bit more because they were used to working with it. Did they do that for Skyrim though? Just polish up the Oblivion engine a little bit more again. I thought it was a different engine. It was, or like a, a more modern version. Yeah. So like that's why I was really looking forward to Fallout 4 because I'm like, it's going to be like really good looking. I honestly think um, Fallout 4 would have come out sooner after Skyrim came out if there was going to be. Skyrim came out. Four years yeah. ago, almost. Yeah. yeah. This November it'll be four years. I think it was. But been here's about the two thing: is, um, like okay, so you say with the sales of Skyrim, but I mean, Oblivion had good sales, and Fallout Three had good sales. So well, like, it's not like Fallout's not a I very think popular S- franchise. Skyrim for them million, Skyrim was record breaking. Yeah, Skyrim yeah but that came out later. Like Skyrim, I don't know why Skyrim got. I don't know why the Elder Scrolls. I don't know if it was just more people. I think people got into ad. it from Oblivion and stuff like that. But yeah, so like, there's no reason that Fallout that the Fallout Four couldn't have the same success that Skyrim did. Like, there's no reason sure. why it couldn't. Dragons. I would say it couldn't, but dragons, lots of dragons. Dude, there's mutated beasts. You could have like a mutated hawk that just fucks shit up and breathes fire at you. Who cares? And then people would say out. they just copied that off of Skyrim. Yeah. And why, why didn't just have give us dragons? <laughs> why? Yeah, why don't you just yeah, give us And because there are twenty, there are, like let's say there's twenty million people waiting saying, "I want to play Elder Scrolls Six. You know, Elder Scrolls Online is not the game I wanted to play. Where's Elder Scrolls Six? And they're gonna say, "Okay, there's gonna be money coming in." Whereas hey, Fallout Four could be so, so could yeah, but then they're, if they just keep putting up all those Fallout people, then like that, they're never gonna get that, and they're just losing people on that. So when they finally do come out with it, it's gonna be less than they originally had. What if? No. I don't think people would because all that. Exists. Now, what if it? They're gonna blend it. Gonna what if, what if they east, just east announce west. like Fallout, Elder Scrolls merge? No, together. that's bad. One film. No, bad. bad Elder bad, Scrolls bad, bad, Six, bad, bad, the Fallout. Bad, bad, bad. There you go. Bad. There you go. But Although, yeah, Elder El, it'll be Elder Scroll uh, Six, the Cyrodiilic Wastelands, or Cyrodiilic no. Wastes. Bad, bad, bad. Um. A time portal goes ripped up through the through the sun Magnus that Day the whole that Magnus oh, made into the sun. All of a sudden, these shit. nukes start flying in. The magic can't hold it up because radiation is like kryptonite to mages Fucking and just. <laughs> Fallout Three New Vegas. That wasn't the same team that worked on Fallout. 3. No, it was a different team. That was a completely different team. The best thing city. about Fallout New Vegas was the DLC. The regular game but, sucked. DLC was awesome. What if, what if they're announcing, because. Like, when Ubisoft does this press conference, when EA does... They don't come up and talk about one game, right? Nope. They come up and they... Here is what's going on for the next year. And even looking further ahead with, like, shit like Star Wars Battlefront. So, what if we're going to see them announce both another Obsidian Fallout title, a new Elder Scrolls, more details on Doom because no one really fucking cares, but they might as well hype it up anyway. And that stupid ass battle cry game that no one gives two fucks about. Well, I mean, the games that Fallout have released last year uh, seem to take um, were taken pretty well. You know, uh, Evil Within and Wolfenstein. You mean Bethesda? Actually, I think yeah. Bethesda was. I think Evil yeah. Within was not received well. Really? I yeah, thought, my roommate I thought... got that game. I, I thought it was kind of weird. I thought it done like quite it. well. I thought people were upset with how buggy it was. Oh, when it first launched, because that was yeah. same. Well, it is a Bethesda game. game. Yeah. yeah. Well, well yeah, but the game played. as buggy as Skyrim was, like in all the fucking reviews, like it's like ten out of ten. But yeah, there's bugs, but yeah. fuck them. But True. Evil yeah. Within, that it wasn't ten oh, out of ten. Em. It has bugs, but fuck them. But but yeah. I think that means but, that Bethesda but, have maybe got a wider IP range than you know maybe we want them to have. You know, as regarding Elder Scrolls on Fallout, so no, so maybe I, I maybe enjoyed, they're coming out with something else. I enjoyed. Um, what was that game? Wolfenstein. No. Evil no. Within. Nope. Doom. It, it came out like <laughs> Doom two was years awesome. Ago. Doom was yeah. Doom's fine. I'm cool with Doom. Two years ago, Fallout came out. No. Two years ago. Two oh, years ago. D- Dishonored. Dishonored. Okay, yeah, like. I'd be cool oh, with a sequel, I didn't like that game. a sequel to Dishonored, like um, our so buddy Dishonored Chris is saying too. in chat, as no, opposed to that 
Battlecry bullshit. Even more Dishonored. Dishonored 3. Battlecry takes place in the Dishonored universe. So Dishonored 3, Dishonored. Taken 3. Taken 3. Sure. Oh my god, if you Liam Neeson's in it, oh my god, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> Liam Neeson confirmed. Really? In all fairness, Liam Neeson is a fucking badass in Taken. I love yeah. them films. Fair enough. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Some of them films. Except that they, he said Taken also in Taken 2 instead of saying Taken 2. So he fucked that line up. Fair. I guess. He missed the opportunity there. What's that called when they like say the name of a movie in a movie? <laughs> I don't know, but I love There's it. There's a saying for that It's like show. a hot tub time machine. Like That was <laughs> deliberate, and I loved it. It's like up. I don't oh know. Oh my god, it's a shark potato. It's called something. Uh, all right. Oh my and god, what is it with all these motherfucking snakes on those planes? Motherfucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> that movie would have been way better if it was called Motherfucking Snakes on this motherfucking plane. <laughs> yeah, no shit. You knew that one. Was oh, bad. my laptop shutting down. Why? Oh my god, and how many times do they say The Matrix in The Matrix? Well, I don't know if that that's really way can. more yeah, yeah, than that's true. feasibly allowed. Yeah, it's horrible. All right, guys. Like, that's that's like yeah. universe ending kind of. <laughs> Stuff. Sure. It's like oh, typing no. Google into Google. You know, that's. It just keeps Wait, going. What happens when you do that? The internet breaks. Does it? Yeah, you have to delete <laughs> Systems 32. Yeah. Fuck. No. But you're alright to type Google in like Bing. Yeah. Because yeah. then it brings you. Because then porn shows up. Because no matter what you type in Bing, <laughs> porn comes up. So. I right, looks like more switching to Bing. My phone, my <laughs> phone. I don't, I don't people, my, Bing, not like phone. when I hit the search button on my phone, it uses Bing search. Like no matter what word I search, if I scroll down through images, like just like one or two swipes, there's gonna be porn there eventually. It's like oh, show cool. Me. Do a search. I was looking up peanut butter and jelly no, sandwiches. Don't show them. Do a search <laughs> for no, we'll get and see what so, porn up. <laughs> a recent job listing has confirmed that Bioware's next Mass Effect title will feature multiplayer. Did anyone ever play any of the other multiplayers for any of the fucking Mass Effect games? Because they all had it. But Mass Effect had a multiplayer? Yeah. No. What's yep. the Mass Effect? I never knew that it had it. You never knew it had it's multiplayer? Oh, oh, Mass Effect. I never is, noticed that. You know, Mass Effect, I only played through the storyline and then usually left the game. Yeah, me returned too. Returned it. Isn't Mass Effect Swotor with more guns? Mm, kind of. And more one player. More, more well, one yeah, player? it is single, single player. player, but it, it's not really Star Wars. It's got its own lore. It's actually, I, yeah. I like the the Mass the Effect games, though. but it's got those round things that you click on, the same as in yeah, like, cool. the dialogue. decision trees. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is very. So is Dragon Age. Oh, I thought you said Kotor. I've, I played oh. about five minutes of sort of, of Dragon Age. Yeah, I, I think know. It's, it's, it's more like yeah, I don't nice think you can form a valid thing. opinion in five minutes. Well, it broke my no. computer, so I, I think that's what I actually broke my computer. It wasn't the porn. No, it's the porn. It was the porn. No, it was, it was Dragon Age. You were Googling, you were binging antisocial. Yep. <laughs> what, what did you find? Show it up to the camera. Don't I can't show it to the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're on we'll Twitch. Get kicked off Twitch. Right. Fuck. Light bulb. I don't think enough people watch us to be able to report us. So it doesn't matter. Be... <laughs> the one fucking asshole that does. Like, God damn it, Cirque. Yeah, fucking Cirque. Yeah. He's fucking... <sighs> Oh. Handsome. Man, well, um, with this handsome face. Uh, otherwise, somebody's gonna accidentally ban him in chat, like you guys do. <laughs> yeah, somebody more. every single episode of late. <laughs> uh, um, other news: Blizzard's gonna be at PAX. Other outlets are reporting on it. They're gonna talk about Hearthstone, Heroes, Yay. and Overwatch. Yeah, I'm gonna get a new one-player mode. In Hearthstone, which I get to talk about for the epi <laughs> countless episodes like I did last year. Yep. Do you remember that? Yeah, those, yeah. those, those 40 minute videos, videos which took me because it was so fucking RNG based. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember I remember sitting here like as you were like talking about it, you'd be like, I'm doing this, and I'm just like, I have no idea what he's fucking talking about. So I just sit there and like, yeah. yeah. That is what and then when my yeah. brother started listening to the show and we just started it, it was like, oh, I like your show. But then you talk about stuff I have absolutely no idea about, like <laughs> M M you know, MMOs, RPGs, and Hearthstone, and I'm just spouting mm. all this shit about Hearthstone that nobody understands, because apparently nobody in our universe plays Hearthstone, even though there's 25 million players of it. But oh. none of those 25 million are in our universe, but they are on a YouTube channel. They do, you do cool. get quite a bit of views on your Hearthstone shit up there. So, 
did. And I did actually get a shout out this week from uh, the the podcast I started listening to. Oh, nice! Oh, awesome! Because I sent him an email of because I made a, the the uh, the death rattle deck that I made a video of us. Mm-hmm. They had an episode where they were talking about it. A viewer had wrote in and uh, said, "Do you think this would work?" And I have. Were you heard. the viewer that wrote in? <laughs> no, because that would have no. been some kind of weird Inception shit. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so uh, but exciting for Pax East. Uh, yeah, just no. all the announcements that'll come this, out. Uh, Not just like Blizzard, two but weeks, everything. is it? Three weeks away. So Pax? It some really, yeah, it's like third March or something. Yeah, so, so it's about three. Yeah, weeks. March six. So we've got some. Oh, six. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we'll, we'll finally get some like yeah. quality news. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yep. It's the truth. Yeah. Not just us ranting about going bullshit. Off topic all the time. No, we're always going to be ranting because it's going to be the Fallout game, and I'm going to be like, I'm so disappointed. And Matt's going to be like, Oh, fucking Fallout, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck you, fucking Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, a point for having an Xbox. Ah, oh, thank God yeah. we won't get banned for that because he had his shirt on. Yeah. All right. Which well, says, actually, my, my shirt says antisocial. I don't know if that's why you brought it up, but. It is. What's it say below? <laughs> It says, I'm not antisocial, I'm oh, anti-stupid. Okay. Fair enough. Because yeah. I wore my Call of Duty shirt the other day, which Maury calls my casual shirt, and then we didn't record. I'm like, I can't yeah. put that on again today because you guys saw me in it. So. <laughs> no, no. I've even shaved my hoodie. Nope, just yes, day. yes, Last week oh, I was yeah. wearing the same hoodie. I've only got two, but they're always in rotation. So I'm not just like <laughs> some scrubby fat bastard that sits at home in one one pair of trousers and stuff. And but, like, I, literally put the, I literally put that shirt on so we could record too, like because like I, I I work with like polos and button downs, so I come home and I'm like I don't want to wear fucking Polo work clothes on my down. podcast on the podcast. So gotcha. Yeah. All right, well that does it for the news this week. Hopefully after packs we'll have something fucking actually newsworthy. So we'll go ahead into what are you playing? Who wants to start us off? Let's do Mike because he's always interesting to listen to. He is very interesting to listen to, uh, but apparently he's fine. My, my controller turned off. <laughs> controller turned Sorry. off. <laughs> Mac, what have you been playing? Oh, what have I been playing? Well, uh, as you guys saw yesterday, I was playing Smite, and that's about the only Smite I've gotten in this uh, past <gasps> week. I've actually kind of felt sort of sick this last week, and then I was gone all weekend in Flagstaff. For another wedding. So I didn't get to... Yeah, I went, to, went wedding. to Washington for a wedding. Yeah, yeah like I went to Washington for a wedding. Brothers, as far as I know, and they <laughs> yeah. always get married. They always oh, get God married. Damn. Always All a right. bridesmaid, never a bride. Anyways, um... <laughs> <laughs> damn. Right. What? It's because you're, you're ginger. ginger. I'm not ginger. <laughs> you fucking off Your beard like is <laughs> fucking ginger. It does. Looks like you've gone down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you've gone down. I'm a gingerbread man. <laughs> Hair is not ginger. The beard, the beard gives it away. Um, so you know, I did play. I played some Smite yesterday, which is fun. And we went to this one game type where it was like Chinese versus Mayan, right? Yeah. Is it Chinese? Yeah. And that was pretty fun uh, because we got our ass kicked one time because our Hebo can suck a dick. Um, no, and <laughs> yeah, he could. He was great at that, and that's about the only thing he was great at. So, then we were on the Mines team, and I, I got the, I was playing this Assassin Monkey. I don't know who the hell he is. <laughs> assassin um, Monkey. Okay. Yeah, he was actually pretty. He was actually pretty fun. Then he had some quick attacks. And the character that I usually play most often is like uh, Neja. And then I've also had some fun with like Loki and stuff. So I've decided that I'm gonna try and master every assassin. As like some type of goal, because I feel like I don't have any goals. Like some people, are like I want to get to level thirty, or I want to master like all the gods, or you know they want to master a specific type of god. So I'm like a oh, specific type, not like a brand. Like hey, I'll do all Chinese or all Greek. I'm like okay. I'll just do all assassins and see how that works. Um, because it sounds like it'd be pretty fun and it's something to work for. And I think when you have something to work for, it makes you enjoy the game more. I'd say that's probably a better goal than, like, I want to play all the Chinese gods, like, because they're in varying roles and stuff, saying, I want to play all of and master all of this role. At least, if nothing else, yeah. like, you'll be a really strong um, assassin in Conquest, so. 
I think that's probably a good yeah, idea. Yeah, I mean, if, I feel like cause if that's the role you want to play, then at least, you know, if there's ever, like, you ever do, like, a like a scrimmage match with, like, people, and they're like, oh, let's do bands, and they, like, ban, like, a assassin that you like to play, like, well, at least I know these other assassins as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that, that was um, I my, my little so game. I, uh, I try and hide it. I try was that a it. casual? Uh, let him be a juggler. That's all. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, we did a bit of that, and then um, some assault, which I wasn't doing too hot in the assault. But actually, I played Cupid. I wasn't too bad at that. That was actually pretty fun playing yeah, Cupid. Yeah, you did really well at stealing yeah. all my kills. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. You did like you did like four thousand damage and had like fifteen kills, and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, so I did. I know it. I had like top. <laughs> well, at least I, at, like least, at least I healed you instead of trying to silence you like our hell did. So yeah. first time hell, I was like, oh, I guess I can't reroll this character. Yeah. So, uh, other than that, I've been playing uh, also more Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare, because <laughs> it's really fun! It's really fun! Are you beating up um, four-year-olds well, again? No, they're, they're not here. That's why I'm playing it, because if okay. they're here, I can't play it. So I'm like, they're gone. Yes, I can play. You have Round Up um, What? Round Up. I think it's called Round Up. Round it's Up. Like a, yeah. yeah. Weed Killer. It's a bug, bug spray. Weed Killer. Yeah. 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 I ought to infest yeah. that onto a computer. Okay. It's your stupid Xbox with its stupid casual games, stupid plants, your stupid zombies, your stupid face. Dude, that game's so hardcore, though, dude. Was... So, in case you haven't noticed, Mac, Maury has missed you in Smite. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say no, honestly, yeah. like, before Christmas, we were like, we almost played every single night, and it was really good, even though Mac had really shit connectivity. And then one night, it just disappeared. Forever. Because I couldn't even connect at all. <laughs> like, it was the worst thing it just ever. Disappeared. And then and he's then like, got... I got a new keyboard, new mouse, dongle. Still didn't see him. Yeah, and I still didn't see him nope. for two weeks. Like, I know. And then he then showed and us then... yesterday how he plays on the PC <laughs> from his house. Oh and I felt God. kind of bad for him. Yeah, I felt yeah. really bad. Yeah, okay. So, like, I don't, you guys can't really... Okay, so, actually, I can turn the zoom off. So, this is how I play. I have to keep... My keyboard right here, and then I use my mouse right here, and wow. so I'm like, D -d 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 yep. And back when I was at the old house, I didn't even have this right here, and my mouse uh, was not as nice, so it couldn't even like read most things. So it could only read really jeans for some reason. Like, so I'd always have to, if I was wearing slacks, I'd have to come home, or if I was wearing anything that wasn't jeans, I'd have to change into oh jeans God. if I wanted to play on my computer, you know what, and I'd have to balance it on one <laughs> knee right here, and then the other one right here, and that's how I played, and... Oh my God, that's so casual. Yeah. Alright, folks, <laughs> down below there's a link to our, our stream tip. What? If you go ahead and donate, we'll buy a mask of Mac no, a fucking no, we don't need it. I, I've got an idea. Like, I shouldn't be saying it live on air, but we should invent a trouser that has a, a mouse panel pad. Of gene. A panel of gene. Yeah. That uses a mouse pad. <laughs> we could call it the NSG pants. The NS jeans. NS jeans. NS jeans. Yeah, no yes. shit jeans. So, this is so great. it's kind of like a cool. mouse pad with. They're also skid proof. To your yes. pants. You can also work in them. So you can, like, you can go to work and you can just be all casual like it with on your leg and be like, yeah, I'm working. Uh, Fuck off. Now do we also have to figure out how to I'm working! I'm working! <laughs> you gotta figure out how to stabilize the keyboard on one leg though too, right? Well you can get like a Velcro strip yeah. on, on your leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's like... pretty good because you only have to use a WASD. So what you have to do is you have to um, balance the keyboard. Oh, um, let's see. Balance the keyboard so that like the weight of your hand counter counterbalances the other okay. side of the keyboard. Okay. So okay. you have to place it right there the way, yeah, see? Yeah. It works like that. We have to come up with a small... We could wow. have a built-in USB port on the other leg with just WASD. Maybe it's, so, it's something even better to, what was it, the bar or whatever it was. It used to lock your steering wheel that had the two circles, you know, two half circles oh, that you lock, the, um, lock it in. What was that? The fucking... Uh, in a security device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, a security you... device, but it locks into your legs. So, you know, with a platform for your keyboard and a mouse so that you can, you know, help back out. That's pretty good, too. It's pretty... You're getting some great but, ideas here. But yeah, so, so, so that's, uh, that's how I... Anytime I'm playing, that's, that's how I'm playing when I'm on my PC, so... Ouch. Uh, 
for the time being, that's why like it's sometimes easier just for me to use a console because I can just go, hey, look, <laughs> I don't have and, to rest uh, my hands on my jeans. Someone in Steam um, chat. It's actually better now that I got this new keyboard and mouse. It's not too bad. That's a horrible excuse because yeah. Will has a wife and so do I. Um, <laughs> but Planet vs. Zombies, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I've actually started uh, playing the cactus character. Who's like a sniper? He's really powerful, like single action shot, um, more distance. He has a drone I can fly around and call down like an airstrike of carrots, shut it, or like <laughs> shoot other needles. Um, he, he places like uh, barricades and mines so you can keep people away while you're flying around with your drone, which is how because you do most of your damage. That makes sense for a cactus to place mines. It does. <laughs> They're like, yeah. It Have does. you seen a cactus Anyways, in the UK? I've been trying I, to get like more skins because I I really like the skins they have in the game and I'm like man I have to play all these games and then like get these in-game currencies so I can buy these packs so I can try and unlock like a skin finally and then you hate me now uh, Maury and Will were like well it's an EA game so they probably have a cash shop and I'm like what I didn't even think about that and then like just money into the so cash there is shop. a cash shop there is a cash shop fucking EA yeah I knew that there was a cash <laughs> shop because my I dropped like twenty eight bucks it. into that thing just so I could. <laughs> <laughs> like I have all these other crap. Just so I could get one skin, I like one skin for the cactus. I didn't have any really um, that I liked. But yeah, so I have all these other skins. I'm like I don't care about this. Don't care about that. I was like spending money. Spending money. Finally, I got it. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then I loaded up Smite. That sounds <laughs> rather sexual, though. You reskinned your cactus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a reason they call it a prick. Um, oh, well, no, no offense, right? No, no joke. I actually do have a cactus. Uh, so I have seen a cactus. And it is like I have cactus penis. in my front yard. Because it goes up, and it's got three testicles below it. I'm going to take a picture and tweet it to to No Shit Gaming. But I, no, no shit, I have got a cactus. With so the only testicles. reason why Mori has a cactus is because it's probably the only fucking plant he can't kill. No, my dad took, my dad took control of the cactus because the other one died. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag right. cactus side. Apparently, right. some motherfucking it. zombie got to it, and my cactus died. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Sniped. Oh, all right. <laughs> Magic 2015? <laughs> What's that all about? Oh, uh, yeah, Magic 2015. I bought that on my uh, Xbox, because I saw that was like 10 bucks. I'm like, I like 2014, so maybe I like 2015. Um, and then I, I got to, like, basically the, the front tutorial, and that's, like, all I've gotten really through, because... Like it at, I'm like I I told it that I played Magic. It's like you should still go through this tutorial, and then yeah. The only downside to these Magic games on the PCs and consoles is that you don't. It's not like Hearthstone where there's like, hey, every card out you can get. Yeah. Um, you're very limited to what your decks can be. You can customize, you can tweak them here and there a bit, so like it's not a hundred percent like the same as everyone else. But no Black Lotus. Yeah. No Black Lotus. That's banned. Um. Yeah, it's it's, it's it, it, I'm pretty sure it's just the 2015 decks and then, um, uh, what the? F I'm really Man, I used sad. to have all these cards. There was uh the the most recent god packs. It was some type of like it's kind of like almost Greek goddess gods sort of. And I can't even remember what it is now. I feel really Got dumb. The, well, one is called Born of the Gods, but I don't know what the other one is. But I'm pretty sure it's just cards from that deck or era. Maybe it's only the 2015 deck sets. I don't know. I think it's basically whatever... You know how every year Magic has a like, launch. Legal. Yeah, and yeah. They, they launch that like set that you can you can pretty much buy that set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I well, think it's all those cards. You spotted boosters, don't you? Yeah, no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can though. buy like, like a Born box. of the Gods. I yeah. think Born of the Gods is still in rotation with 2015 right now. Okay. Oh. Gotcha. So that's what I think. That's what I'm saying. It's probably still in there. Um... But, but if, yeah, if it's so a Greek god, chances are it was a child. Well, they're, they're Greek god-ish sort of things. Like there's like centaurs and stuff like that, and um, well, like god, there's like god cards. My Egyptian god card. Uh, oh my god, I've just I've just finished watching season wrong? two of Eps I mean season two. Obelisk the Tormentor on uh, Netflix, and it it finished. Seemed like it was halfway through. They didn't even finish the battle scene tournament. I'm so annoyed. <laughs> yeah, battle say fuck battle. I don't know what you guys and are talking talk about. Talking of Yu-Gi-Oh, I'm really, I'm really upset that they cancelled Yu-Gi-Oh online. I thought I had loads of fun playing that game. Sad face. Never played it. But that cost a fuck. I, I did have a Yu-Gi-Oh game when I was 
I don't know, in like the sixth, fifth or sixth grade for like my Game Boy. Yeah. Where you could Game like Boy. type in the code at the bottom of the card and you'd get that card in game. Yep. But then like I realized you could just look up those those codes, codes online, online and get all the cards. You know, and then just like yep. yeah, I got all the good cards. I had one on the and original like, Xbox, and I you just got to beat all the people out of the first two seasons of Yu Gi Oh. So you just kick the shit out of like yeah, I mean, eh, my Valentine. Eh, my Valentine with my stupid cyber ladies. <laughs> okay. She has harpies. <laughs> cyber harpies. Elegant egotist. Now I have three. <laughs> and the ever loyal harpies pet dragon. <laughs> that that's what she always played. Kuna with chains. Kuna, it's, uh, fucking, it's a fucking shit card. Like Joey's deck <laughs> is the, the biggest pile of crap you've ever seen. Even Yugi's like actual deck is garbage. Like if you went up to somebody in real life with that deck, they'd laugh at you and like just kick you out. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna kick you. Your best my cards, dark magician. You piece of shit. Yeah, you know, like fucking two cost, uh, two sacrifice, twenty five hundred attack with no special effect. It's absolutely garbage. But it's like, oh, it's my most powerful in their cards. Maury, you got to believe in the heart of the cards. I believe in the heart of the cards. I was, like, ranked 10 in the UK or Yu-Gi-Oh! Online. I know this shit, but, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! was terrible. Baby Dragon. <laughs> Baby Dragon with time. Where's it go? If you're in Japan, why do you have a Brooklyn accent, Joey? <laughs> hey, my sister's blind. What can I do? Yeah. That's, like, the worst Brooklyn accent ever. Oh, my God. And, like, his bad. sister... Like, she pisses me off no end. She is like... Joey. She's just like, oh my God, if we just all stay together, we can overcome anything. And you're my biggest motivation in the entire world. You give me strength. Big brother. Big it's like, brother. Uh, shut the yeah, fuck up. Yeah, like, fucking, oh my God. She's so cancerous with it. God. Joviality. Did you guess you a moment? I think I think my memory. Uh, that's that's my weekend game. That's that's. Pretty <laughs> I fucking love Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> you guys should have a Yu Gi Oh podcast. No one's played Yu Gi Oh, but we're but, talking about it. Boy, do they have opinions about Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I have right. season one on DVD. All right, well done. Oh, um, yeah. I'll go ahead and hit up uh, my week. What I've been up to. So. On last episode, everyone heard that Nameless gifted me Toxic, uh, the shooter that we spoke about back on episode one. And I is the community find... toxic? I don't know. It probably yeah. is because it's one of those kind of games. But um, it was. I played a bot match. I did okay. Um, <laughs> that's it. Against bots, and that's all I've done. Against bots. Yeah. Did so I... it definitely, but. To its credit, like, when we were talking about it on episode one, we were saying it, it looks like it's going to be a Quake-like shooter, that old, real fast feel, rocket jumps, all that crazy shit. That's all there. It is cool. just like Quake. It's one of those old-fashioned Team Deathmatch shooters. Um, so if you've been really looking for that, I would recommend that you pick up Toxic because even just from the bot match, it feels just like that. Um, but I've been waiting for Nameless to be able to jump on and actually jump into matchmaking with me uh, so I wasn't going at it alone and being real bad alone because that's sad. How can we be bad at shooters? You play every other shooter that's out there. How could it go wrong? <laughs> because every other shooter is like this Twitch-based ADS, some sort of aim assist, and this probably has, it has no ADS and no aim assist. So... So too high. I skill like aiming down sights though. Like aiming down sights is good because no, it's I, real life. I do like aim down sights, but this is not that. Literally a hundred percent of the a hundred percent of the time when I'm shooting a gun in real life, I'm aiming down the sights. Fair enough. Good. Fair enough. But you have a gun in real life. Yeah, he does. I can grab it if you want. Please don't. You'll scare I off our UK ball audience. Ball. Um, other than toxic, I've also. <laughs> And the reason why me and Nameless probably haven't jumped in and actually played any, like, real toxic matches is because, uh, Dota 2, as usual. So, we kind of talked about the Year Beast event that, that dropped, um, and it seems like every time they release an Arcana, which is, like, a really nice skin for a hero, um, they are going to do some kind of event. We saw... When they brought out an Arcana set for Phantom Assassin, we saw the Phantom 
nemesis contract event. And also, every time we saw an Arcana, we saw a new hero. So they brought out the Phantom Sass in Arcana, we got the Oracle hero. This time, they bring out Crystal Maiden Arcana, and we get Winter Wyvern, who they've been teasing for a while. So Winter Wyvern is a intelligence hero um, and is like the queen of anti-team fight. Her first skill gives her the ability to fly over terrain for six seconds, um, as well as increased range, and it deals pure damage. So that's pretty good. Um, her second skill is it you target a unit and then she like shoots like an ice shard at it the shard hits the unit and then splinters and da does damage in an aoe but it doesn't affect the unit you target so you can use it to kind of like wave clear or in combination with her ultimate which i'll get to her third skill encases a friendly unit in ice and makes them uh invulnerable to physical damage they can still take magical damage or pure damage but no physical will hit them and it'll apply a heal over time and then her ultimate which makes her the queen of anti-team fight you use it on an enemy hero and it forces all the heroes on that enemy's team in an area of effect to start attacking their ally that sounds like a massive Ooh. circuit taunt it's yeah. pretty fucking cool. <laughs> like <laughs> did that they year like, do game damage, mode? or is it, or is it just they lose control of their hero? They lose control of their hero. Hero. Yeah. They so just they, start they whacking. Not do damage to each other. Yeah. Yeah. They just start yeah, okay. whacking their buddy. So, picture this game mode where the two teams are basically running down lanes at each other with a beast. The beast counts as a hero, so you can force the other team to almost kill their hero, and then you can combo her second skill use it on whoever you've targeted with your ultimate and sure the people hitting the friendly unit aren't taking any damage but then once you use that skill on the person they're hitting it splinters and hits all of his allies as well so she's a really great anti-team fight really great in the year beast event um i've played four year beast brawls with winter wyvern and i am four or three and one so I've only lost one match on her in the event. So how much does your teammates just absolutely hate you when you encase them in ice? Preventing oh, no, they love it. You end really? up saving so many people's at Yeah, because one of, like, I was looking on Reddit, thanks to Mara. She linked to me, like, an article where someone was, like, breaking down the Year Beast event. And the Year Beast has, like, high damage resist. But everyone's picking like physical damage heroes and a lot of your hard carries are physical damage heroes so mm -hmm. the fact that winter wavern can encase someone in ice and make them invulnerable to physical damage will actually save people's life like we have a chant a video up on our youtube channel of me playing winter wyvern in a year beast brawl and um, Nameless Noob is on terrorblade and we're in their base for a long ass time and we're able to stay there because even if the, the carry's getting low, I encase him in ice, heal him back up, and all of a sudden we can keep fighting. So it's actually a really cool skill and a really interesting hero, um, especially when you end up going against a team that is building for team fights, and that's what like the meta is around this Year Beast event, is to build either team fights or pushes, and if you f build team fight and you don't snag up Winter Wyvern, you're going to get punished for it. Cool. That sounds fun. She sounds is, fun. is she like a giant ice dragon. That's she cool. is a giant ice dragon. And like I said, if you want to see a video, I we have two videos on the channel that I've put up for Dota 2. So one is the uh, a, just an overview of Winter Wyvern. I play through a bot match. I show off her skills and what they can be used for. I show that it's effective wave clear. I show the healing, all that jazz. And then I also show the Year Beast Brawl. So if you want more depth, more details feel free to head to our youtube channel youtube.com slash no sht gaming channel you can check out that um but really other than this event going on in dota and what little of toxic i've played that's all i've been playing guys oh. cool 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 very good very good i i'm really happy that you kind of now stick into one game dota 
32. Even if it's Dota, like, because when, when I met John, like, he played four different games a week. So, so I'm glad, well, that's I'm glad, good. I'm glad he stopped that's being casual. Team. Well, I still uh, play other games. Just a lot. Yeah, I know, because like when you get into Army, you play that for an entire week. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to take a break. Or DayZ or anything. Yeah. So I hold, I hold out hope for when ESO comes, and then we can all play that for a week, and then everyone stops. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> He's looking forward to it so much because that's not <laughs> what happened week. when it released once already. Yeah. No, I we played it for like. A I've, month. I've been playing like I've actually been playing ESO a bit, but well, I might as well go. Actually, I might as well. Yeah, go you now. might as well. Yeah, since you're already going. Yeah. yeah so so yeah, I've jumped in. I've jumped into um, ESO a couple of times. Like I say, I'm just kind of getting ready for when the buy to play comes, even though I'm subscribed and I can play it anyway. Um, I'm kind of VR12 on my um, on my main Moriku, but really to level him up, I have to go through the um, Craglon, and I can't be able to do that alone, because you need like teams of yeah, four at least. And I, I've got no friends playing it right now. So, I'm kind March of concentrating. Something. What? March something, and I'll be March, able to play March 17th. March 17th. Yeah. Yeah. I go. mean, I've already downloaded it, so I'm just nowhere near VR12. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I actually updated it um, not too long ago, like a week or so ago. I, I just opened it up and like updated it to the most recent launcher. So. All right, cool. Yeah, so I've been doing that, and I was considering maybe seeing about making another character and see how far I can get before the March 17th comes. And I was like, but if I do that, I only have to start again to play with everybody. So, that seems like a uh, futile effort of making a character just to play it, maybe. So, I'm not sure. So, I might, I might keep my fingers out of that water for now. But, who knows. I've also been playing a arse ton of Hearthstone. And I've had, actually had a bit of luck this week. Um, I played an arena on Saturday... I went five and three, and you know I, I'm usually averaging around um, four or five wins now, which is quite good. I even started started a uh, European account on my regular account, so I did a couple of arenas European on that as well. European account on a regular account. Yeah, I've actually I actually figured out a way now where we can do Hearthstone challenges against each other. Uh, and not have to succumb to the fact that I own every card in the game because we can just go to the Malaysian servers or Asia servers <laughs> and um, play each other there where we just have the basic cards. So I'm going to have to come up with something what we can challenge each other because I know John's really looking forward to that because he yeah. might have more cards than are just Paladin and Will, <laughs> Will might have some rogue cards. <laughs> no way. I'm so, torching the rogue cards. Is yeah. my Murloc deck still effective? <laughs> There are actually more Murlocs out now. now, and funny you mentioned oh, Murlocs, see, see. because what I was going to say with my arena run, I obviously got a pack um, of the new Austin cards, of the Goblins and Gnomes, and I opened the pack, and it was first a rare, and then an epic, and then an epic, and then an epic, and then a golden legendary. Oh, oh my shit. god. What a ridiculous pack that got me, like, would have so been a ridiculous amount of dust. That was like a crazy pack. So you didn't dust your golden legendary, no. and then just get the legendary. Because no, because I've already got I've already got all the legendaries from the new set. So all the golden oh, okay. ones I need, and the golden legendary was Neptulon, who is a shaman seven seven, three overload. But when you play him, he gives you four random murlocs in your hand. So he can give you the murloc legendary. In your hand. Mm. So if you play that with three, the other three Murlocs, you can have ridiculous burst damage. Okay, you you know you you may not. Well, you should actually be able to play them all because you get. That's from more low. You yeah. only get the three overloads, so you could you know play them yeah, all. Yeah, even if you were playing it on seven, you'd have five yeah, mana so, left over. Like that was great, but then the next day I went into another arena. And I went like Owen. I think I went one, one on one, and I was like, I don't like this deck of shit, and just scrapped it. Opened the next pack and got a regular Neptulon. 
So not golden. Not golden, but still a legendary, still legendary. out of two packs That's that awesome. I opened. But I did have that one in not golden, so I dusted it and I made some. I made a golden card. I made two gr golden druid of the claws for my uh, ramp druid deck, which is what actually I've been leveling with this this um, season. this season, and I'm up to eighth rank eight. I almost made it to rank six. No, yeah, I almost made it to rank six, but then I went a massive losing streak. Ouch! Uh, <laughs> so I'm all the way back to eight, and it's just really frustrating because I seem to. Like, this is the, you know, I know Will kind of thinks that kind of ranking up in Hearthstone is a bit of a grind, but I think once you get to rank 10 and lower, then that's when the grind is real. Yeah. Um, you know, you can kind of get to rank 10 just on win streaks. You know, if you get, if you win every game, you can get to rank 10 from rank 25 pretty easily, you know, because you're skipping. Right, because you're getting the uh, bonus stars. Yeah, and like yeah. I think it's only like three and four stars you need to level up. But whereas once you get to like ten, you need like five stars before you can even get to the next rank. And then rank five is is what separates the men from the boys because you have to win twenty five games Holy shit. to get to legend. Which is why I've never made it past um, rank th rank three, four. Rank four, yeah, almost made it to rank three, but didn't quite. So yeah, that's the real that's the real grind, and you have to. You know, we covered the stats before. You know, it's, it's like the top five percent of Hearthstone only make it into rank five or above. So uh, you're in that, that top five. Yeah, I've yep. been there, but never finished there, sadly, because. I think the highest I've actually finished is five because I just stopped when I when I went back to five. But then, like last season, you know, I got to almost three and then just started dicking around and ended up at like rank eight again. So. And now, I mean, you only really <laughs> focused into Hearthstone like at the tail end of that season, anyway. Yeah. yeah. And th this season, I mean, what are we in? Eighteenth. Um, so yeah. I've technically got ten days left. I don't think I'm going to dedicate the time again to pushing it you know maybe I could get to fifth um, but I just you know I, I myself has been a bit uh, ill the last week or so so I've definitely not been playing as many games and stuff but um, I really do want to get legend yeah I've spent a lot of money on Hearthstone and I really love the game and I, I think it you want that card back I do want the card pack and I think it's very skill intensive um, and I know GBG has brought out a lot of um, random, you know, RNG-based cards, but I yeah. think that, you know, kind of the Blizzard developer says, I think the RNG makes it more skill-based because you have to adapt on the fly to difficult situations. Now, obviously, you know, you can get screwed so badly that there's no coming back um, because of the RNG, but... I just like having the different events that occur and having to overcome them, which is really good. It's like, you know, like the piloted shredders, which you don't know is a, it's a four cost uh, common card. It's a 4 3 minion death rattle summons a random two drop, which means you can get a two drop from any of the classes or any neutral card. So, like, you can get doomsayer which is at 07 at the at the start of your or the end of your turn or start no start of your turn destroy every minion on the board you can get that from this card which i've had actually had happen and it's won me a game because my card has destroyed the enemy's massive forces you know and that's just random you know or you can get the mana wraith which is a 2-2 two -two creature all minions cost two more i think so you know you get all these different Outcomes that can happen, same as the Sneed's old shredder, which summons any ran and a random legendary when he dies. So you could end up with Low Walker Cho and just die because every single spell gets given to each other. So yes, it's RNG based, but I think there's a lot of skill involved as well, as well as luck because card games need luck. You know, Max is talking about yeah. magic. Yeah, it's all you know. Yeah. Everything's RNG based in card games because you have to draw. Draw exactly. It's just a shuffle deck makes it draw. So well, yeah. I mean, there's a card in Magic that if your deck has like two hundred over two hundred cards or something like that, and you draw this one card, you instantly win the match. 
Yeah, but I think magic <laughs> cards. Uh, but if there's, you're playing... really, but it's a, there's a randomness. There's a random oh, yeah. luck element to all card games. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're playing, I think magic like competitively. I think the deck limit is sixty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So you know your chances of drawing that in a sixty deck is increased a lot, especially because you can build a deck around drawing cards or you know cycling, you know milling and all that kind of stuff to to get to the point where you draw it. You know, talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, there was in the very first season, Hexodia. The forbidden yeah. one, which once you four cards, if you, you had yeah all five because five. you got five pieces. You got the head, both legs, and both uh, both um, arms and ha- arms. Yeah, and once you got all them, you instantly won. It's a two oblivion, and he beat Kaiba in the very first episode and <laughs> sent to the sh- sent his bad half to the shadow realm, who then came back to fight Yugi on uh, Duelist Kingdom. But enough about Yugi today. Um, uh-huh. So yeah, I've been playing Hearthstone. I really want to get Legend, but I don't necessarily want to spend eight hours a day like all the pros do, playing Hearthstone on stream and all that kind of stuff, which is, I guess, kind of casual of me. So, Well, no, those people get probably paid for it, so it makes sense for them. Well, they get paid because they stream. But, right. you know, I could stream eight hours a day playing Hearthstone <laughs> with nobody watching, so I wouldn't get paid. <laughs> But I'd, still yeah, be, so. I'd, I'd still be playing eight hours of Hearthstone, even if I was streaming or not. But um, yeah, but they can do it because they get paid for it. I'm just saying, you but, know, it's like well, yeah, they well, wouldn't yeah, be doing this if they didn't make money. A, from it's it. a catch twenty two because they started they streaming, had to do it so they get a following. Right. Yeah, so like if I started, I don't think that I'm necessarily a. Uh, well, I am. I am a pillar of no knowledge and. Uh, oh, absolutely. Ex- so yeah, I could do it, but you know. We're, we're no shit gaming, so we don't want to do the same thing over and over again all day, even though it might make us money. But we're not bothered about that. We're here because 22 we episodes games. and we enjoy it. Yeah. And we like talking to each other. And we like you listening to us and not sending feedback. No, we don't like the not sending <laughs> feedback part. Oh, we don't like that part. Okay, sorry. <laughs> We like the no that. hate mail thing. We like the feedback. Hate mail. Yeah, I like that we get no hate mail or bad reviews. <laughs> but, or bad reviews. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't think we've got any, we haven't gotten no one-star reviews. Which no, is good. no. That's awesome. Yeah. I think we're going to get five right now. Thanks a lot, So, um, what else have we been playing this week? We've been playing Smite. I played some Smite with Will. Uh, like I said, I've been a bit ill, and Will was a little bit ill. So, yeah. we kind of got ill together and just kind of... Oh, that's cute. S- yeah. Got kind of salty playing... <laughs> <laughs> playing smart because we were people who were... We got together and... and we got salty. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like a circle yeah, it was jerk. pretty bad there for a while. Um, and sadly now, Will's son can't play with us anymore because it broke his laptop. <gasps> yep. Good old I time. ordered a new screen today. Hey, hey. nice. Hey. What a good day. You won't get out of there. more, more careful all that, with it. All that snow. Yep. Well, so. you should wear a green shirt and be a floating luchador head. No, because then I won't get this uh, these questions about why am I sitting on the beach. Ah. And it, it's not a beach. It, it actually is, you know, there's grass behind me, but there's snow on the grass. So Remember, as long as there's grass on the pitch, you can play. <laughs> He's in White wow. Sands, New Mexico. Yes, yes. yes. Mexico is more in the chat. Oh, yes, she is. Yes, yes she, she is. is. But that's not talking, so I'm just banner. Um, yeah. My health. Um, talking about Smite. Smite. Um, Smite. I can't really remember what I said about Smite. Uh, I played a bit played Smite. Well, not been doing much. Sick. Oh, we had um, the weekend of um, double worshippers because of Valentine's Day, so I unlocked the new um, Valentine's Day icon, which is a love art, which is really, really horrible because it's a love art, and. Yeah. Uh, I've now got the last four characters, or well, the last four gods, within about one or two games of having them mastered, which will Congrats. give me every single god in the game uh, to master one, which means available for me to play in league mode. Oh, awesome! And as I said Congrats. before, we, uh, you know, Smite just opened up the the opportunity of uh, duo queue in league. So once I get a uh, Wanderer or um, Will. For another decent amount. Oh, I think Will's on like 40 masteries, so he's not 47 too bad. 47 right now. 
yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, we may start doing some league and be even less casual. Oh yeah. boy, I'm looking forward to it. And then, just to um, kind of tap off my casual week, <laughs> I've been logging into uh, Heroes of the Storm every day, just kind of doing a daily quest when it's there. Um, still kind of trying to find what it is about that game or what could be in the game that would make me say this is the MOBA I want to play six or seven hours a day mm. you know like yeah. what, what what's in this game like I was really excited for it even though you know even though I knew it was more casual based I I think I still had higher hopes of what it could offer in terms of um, fun factor play, anyway. so yeah, we're still well, and... still logging in. You know, spent some money on it. I kind of enjoy it, but it's definitely not. Hit Did you explore the UI it's... in the latest patch? Because it seems like they have better stats and everything now. So you yeah, can you, see... yeah, you can look at your win rate on on heroes. Although I don't like it because it gives you bot match stats. And yeah, hmm. that's a bit weird. It's like. Why? Why does it even matter if you've won one hundred, you know, eighty percent of your games against bots? That, yeah, that should be that shouldn't that shouldn't be an issue, because yeah. that you know that, I mean, that weird. Ah, you can have a hundred percent win rate. Like, oh great, I'm 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 the greatest at this game, but it's always against bots. Like, <laughs> how much more casual, you know, pleasurable yeah, you can you make it? So, yeah, yeah, I'm still looking forward to it. I have some fun. You know, I played Diablo in a, a little bit today and. He's got quite a nice combination of his like he's got a massive pullback and then he's got a drive where he pushes them so you can like really separate and do quite well in team fights but he disintegrates early game so yeah but you know still there I'm still holding on I'm still hoping for something else to come out or some changes maybe we'll see you know packs if they announce something mm -hmm. it might change up a little bit but I don't see it. I finally, I got round to episode two of a Game of Thrones, and I loved it. It's such a, it's so great. There's lots of twists, things I want to expect in, and uh, really excited for episode three. I'm that actually pretty much covers me. For this pretty week. interested that you are liking the game so much because I know when it was first announced, like me and you were both like, "This isn't the Game of Thrones game we wanted." Yeah. But seems like you're really enjoying it. So, yeah, I like I like the fact that it's, you know, I've I've not necessarily read the books. I did buy the first book on audiobook, but as I found out this week, is that at iTunes so only allowed you to download the book once. And now since what? I've that sucks. Yeah, so since I've um, reformatted my computer twice, I've downloaded it a whole bunch of times, like audiobooks, not from iTunes. They don't yeah. allow it. No. I checked. Yeah. Because no. like, cause sometimes I'll take them off my eye, my eye touch and then just re-download them again. Mm. Maury, I'm telling you, call customer support. Just no, they're call. not. No, they're, no, Apple are in fucking America. It's not talking to them. <laughs> I'm but, sure yeah, there's anyway, a customer they support. Allow, they don't UK. allow you to download it more than once, so sure I've there. lost hundreds of pounds worth of books. So hopefully I've got some of them on my laptop. But I think I'm pretty much sure I've lost all my brand and Sanderson books, even the one I've not read. That's but yeah, odd. that's one reason why I had, I bought Game of Thrones episode one, which cost me like thirty three pound, and I only got half of it because I downloaded it on my phone, and my phone wasn't big enough. So that was really annoyed me. That's since the day I bought it, I've never had that second half or the second like yeah second half, which was split. Into, so I've lost like sixteen hours. That I've, that I've never had. The second half is the best half, too. No, no, because it basically the first book is almost exactly season one of Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. they did that pretty so, well. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's what I like about the Game of Thrones in this is that you can see how much it's based on the TV show while not being the same main focal point because it's based, you know, on this like new this new house that is in the book and stuff, but not really talk about so it's nice seeing your own story and then it's also nice like the cameos that appear 
you know, like in the episode two, you get to see Jon Snow and stuff like that. Cool. So I am having a lot of fun with it, but yes, I would have liked a uh, more action Skyrim based, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm actually That's getting cool. you know I now own pretty much most of the best Telltale games, so I'm looking forward to looking at all them because I think what they've done with that is is real good. So I'm I'm interested to see the other games. Awesome. So I think that pretty much does me. You know, got two legendaries this week in Hearthstone, one golden, so that's pretty good. All right. Will, what have you been playing? Well, um, you know, my week had been smite, 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 smite um, when I wasn't sick. But also today I jumped into um, Heart of um, Heroes of the Storm with Mori for a little bit. Uh, just cleared out the dailies. Um, I did not see the new hero, the Lost Vikings, but from what I understand, it's kind of a pain because you have an active, so your one, two, and three button basically allow you to switch between the Vikings. So micro, and, like I called. Yeah, very micromanaging of the three different Vikings with their different skill sets. Yep. So um, I don't know how... Uh, effective it's going to be in this game um, but you know as I go through it maybe I'll find somebody that's actually good with the Lost Vikings <laughs> so I don't know stay tuned but just go watch like a Meepo player in Dota 2 and you'll get it well there's one thing that I've noticed is that actually Heroes of the Storm now seems to have more Twitch viewers than Smite on a regular basis Ooh. yes Wow. so I think that's just a Blizzard thing. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Because like Diablo three is always pretty reasonably placed, and yeah. Hearthstone, you know, is pretty much one of the most watched games. Well, and yeah, what, pretty much what, as you know, soon as they, yeah, as soon as they gave the Founders Pack out, so that you could buy into the beta for forty dollars, um, they jumped to a million players, like yeah. right away, just because people will throw money at Blizzard. Blizzard to get the game. I still think it's an expensive MOBA, though. Yeah, no. when you look at all of them. Yeah, it's ridiculously expensive. But, Hero prices but, yeah. and skins and skins and everything. Yeah, but, really high. But so. with how casual it is, people they're gonna make millions from it. Oh no, because people are just yeah. gonna say, "Oh, it's ten dollars. I'll just pay ten dollars, get this new hero that's out, and play him once play a him month, once in a while." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what they'll just do. You know? Be good. Hey? <laughs> and think you're being good because you can, yeah. you know, wreck those bots. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. One hundred percent win ratio. One hundred percent win rate. Yeah, dude. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, anyways, um, on to Smite. Um, just this week, so we have the new conquest map. So season two has begun, and uh, I jumped in with Wanderer from the community uh, on the first night, and we were just excited about this uh, Season 2 map. So what we did was queue up for Conquest right away. Um, I called uh, Solo and pretty much all of them because I want to play Warriors. I uh, got into a match, uh, was playing Chalk, uh, just because, well, got to play Chalk. It's the first map. It's the first game. Chalk Go with my dude. Best, exactly. And uh, we were... We were going along, we were doing okay. Um, ultimately, I think we were a little bit behind in the game, and suddenly, crash. Ouch. So, uh, this, basically, we were all booted from the game, and uh, we had went back to the login screen, had to log back in. Hmm. So, we grouped back up, queued for Conquest again, we're doing this thing, and uh, then we got... Got queued in, I got in, I got solo, typed it in, first to solo, picking my chalk, and suddenly our support guy's like, chalk, plea, plea, I want to play chalk support. I'm like, fine, fine, what the hell, I'll be a nice guy, I need to master tier anyways, so I picked tier. I absolutely hated tier. Oh, man. <laughs> Seems like he doesn't do any damage, but, you know, you're watching the videos. I just watched a video of Confrey from uh, Titan um, playing earlier, so I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm going to do tier. So I grabbed tier and, you know, 
sitting there in the solo lane, going up against a Loki, and um, you know, a little worried about the matchup just because Loki can go in Viz, he can just suddenly jump out at you and do a lot of damage. And so we're trading back and forth, clearing the waves, clearing the waves, and suddenly, you know, it's it's a while into the game. I go back to the tower, and I'm just going to back for the first time. Okay. And uh, it, it did not work out so well. I see Loki pop his decoy. I figure he's just clearing the wave, and then suddenly, Loki's on my ass. <laughs> he's under tower while I'm trying to back. Luckily, I had my cooldowns off. I did a little fearless, which is like this charging double strike with the sword into your two, which is like an arc just destruction, and Loki died right there. It was one of those perfect shots in golf, you know, that just make you want to come back to the game even though <laughs> the rest of the round sucked. You're just like, I'm hooked now. Tears, my man. Really? So Horrible. The Horrible hell with God. Luchador um, Chalk. The Luchador is done. I am going Luchador Tear. Okay. Yes! Get a sign. No, that doesn't there. work because it has got no wordplay and Neo Haras yeah. won't make a tear screen. No, the... that's, that's true. It's got to be Luchador Sock Chalk. But, but anyways, I basically just shit on this. Loki's day. He went 0-6. Yes. I was um, I was six and zero oh before I started just feeling a little invincible because it was kind of funny as I was running in lane they the other team would you could see them they would just turn around and flee <laughs> and so finally as we were we were like rushing into the Titan about to take the game it's like oh yeah you're low health and in your fountain. I'm going to fearless you out of the fountain um, just to see if I can turn this around. Well, well, three more of them spawned and killed me. So I ended up going seven and two. So I, I did get my seventh kill, but I'm, unfortunately I, I died right there in the, in the fountain, which is not the place to die. Um, but just as a, a tip, I do know something now. Oh, yeah. While in the opposing team's fountain, you can open the store and buy things. Just letting you know. Oh, nice. Um, if you ever get that opportunity where you can be in the opposing team's fountain, you are more welcome to more than welcome to buy um, items or anything else you may need. Yeah, uh, it's actually... I would... Go ahead. I, just, yeah. I wouldn't want to give gold to the enemy team. <laughs> oh, okay. So, it was but awesome. It was awesome. It, it's actually kind of funny because you can do that in Dota as well. Like, if you have stuff sitting in your stash, but you're, like, at the enemy base and you're clearly about to win the game, you can just walk over... Stand just outside their fountain, and you can grab it all from your stash. How it moved from one side of the map to the other, nobody knows. But no one. Nope. nope. But that was cool. So sounds like thrilled. It. Had had an amazing game. It made me so excited. Need to play more conquest. Um, and then we played more last night. I think everybody we have talked about it. We streamed it. So Mac, Mori, myself, and Wanderer again playing Smite. Uh, we went through, played a series of games uh, with Assault, and then we played two of the Game of the Days. Uh, both, well, one time I played uh, Support um, with Guan Yu, and the next time, I don't even remember what I was playing. What the heck was played New You are Chalk. New, weren't yeah. you? I thought you were Chalk. He did, did play one Chalk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did chalk play Chalk. Solo. Yeah, I played Chalk. Solo. Oh, yeah, because you, so. you had to use a recall of Cruise on the Owls. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't like it one the, bit. The strange one. No, he didn't like it at all. No, because I, I don't play that one. I always play the Slaughterhouse skin, so love Chalk. He's awesome. So I'm not as good as Tear, apparently. No, no, Tear's awesome now. Tear's terrible. <laughs> no, he's good. Tear's he's top tier. 1v1 okay. yeah, me, bro. 1v1 one one me. Okay. One, <laughs> and then make a video. Take? Hercules. Hercules? Okay, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> well, can't wait to see the video. Oh god, I'm gonna I'm gonna rip my laugh if I die if I lose. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna laugh hardcore if you die. The salt will be real. No Although I can just say, well, Hercules has been nerfed. Oh this, please, this season you. so <laughs> it's been nerfed. It's bullshit. It's, it's, bullshit. it's now got bullshit. less damage. Yeah, but Sheer hasn't been buffed. Ooh, it's been buffed by Shots new fired. new new um, items. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not really. Nah. But if somebody's nerfed, that automatically means that other people are buffed because they're. 
No. Oh, yes. quit your excuses. You haven't no, even lost yet. No, they were yet. already balanced. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Play Smite. It's awesome. All right. So that's going to do it for What Are You Playing, guys? We'll go ahead and jump real quick into week's releases, a.k.a. on Twitch Game Trends. Uh, so coming out, we have Dead or Alive 5, last round, Xbox One, 360, PS4, PS3, February 17th. Today. Dead Rock, PC. Today. Hand of Fate, Xbox One, PS4, PC, today. Pillar, PS4, today. Total War Attila, it's out on PC, now. The Book of Unwritten Tales, out on PC, oh, Unwritten Tales 2, out on PC, February 20th. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, Mori is so excited to play this game. Coming to your Wii U on February 20th. Uh, the Order, 1886, coming out for PS4 on February 20th and then being returned to GameStop later that day. Uh, Roundabout, coming out for Xbox One, February 20th. And that does it. What's with these Friday releases? Weeks. I don't know. Well, it's typical also, for Nintendo. Yeah, you can buy it Friday night, return it Saturday morning, and then buy a proper game. Yeah, yeah. well, Nintendo, Nintendo's never really gone by that Tuesday thing, oh. but uh, PlayStation yeah, and Xbox have. And then, I do. Yeah. I don't know what roundabout is, but the Order 1886 is like a pretty like big game they're talking about, so I would think that would follow the traditional Tuesday release. I would too, but hey, whatever. Well, like I said, you buy it Friday and take it back Saturday. Yeah, so exactly. That's, that's the plan. Ed. They know that everyone will have Saturday off, so after they beat it, they can go get a proper game, like Maury said. Maury, he's a genius. I'm going to buy Vol. So that does it for our <laughs> game trend section. Now we're going to go ahead and jump right into the eSports. Um, I'll go ahead and run through what Dota 2 news I have, and then Smite will probably round out the rest of this segment. Um, Funic has left Na'Vi's Dota 2 team. Uh, the offlaner has left after two years of working with Na'Vi, stating that he wants to focus on other areas of his life and will be inactive in the Dota 2 scene. So Na'Vi is going to be looking for a replacement there. Um, offlane, pretty hard position, but I'm sure they'll find somebody. It's Na'Vi, so one of the most popular teams in Dota 2. Um, and actually, kind of a shock, uh, although there have been talks about it, but everyone pretty much feels that this is... Well, there's a lot of analysts and people that follow the Dota 2 scene that believe that this was a really bad move. Um, Black has been kicked from the Chinese Vichy Gaming, uh, their Dota 2 team. This was confirmed in a Reddit Ask Me Anything that uh, Ice Ice Ice, the offlaner for... Um, Vici conducted. He confirmed Black was leaving and that communication was an issue, but cited that his inability to perform when Ice 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 or Super got off to a bad start in the lane as the biggest disappointment. And in my opinion, so Ice 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 is their offlaner. Um, Super is their mid, unless Black is playing a carry mid, but usually Black is going to carry in their safe lane. And if your mid and your offlaner are off to a bad start, you're not making space for your safe lane farmer. So obviously he's not going to perform. And uh, I believe Gorgon, the Wonder Cow, Elder Staff for JoinDota.com has crunched numbers and show, that show that Black at Dota Asia Championships was still putting up really hard numbers. He was one of the better farmers in the tournament. So he was still doing his job. If Ice 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 and Super are getting off to a bad start and not making space, then they're the reason why Black is not performing properly. Or at least... Yeah, yeah it opinion. seems like we kicked this guy because when we suck, he couldn't carry us enough. Yeah. I mean, I get that. I'm I guess, hard. you know, if you're a carry, that's your job. But if you can't make space for the guy to farm... He can't get big enough to do his job. So, yeah. uh, I think time will tell that this is going to be a huge mistake. Vichy will probably regret this, but they say that they can't confirm who they're picking up yet, but it's going to be someone much more aggressive. So, that's all for my Dota 2. Probably Sorchan. It may be Sorchan. She's Asian and, and aggressive. She, yes, she is a, a, a hitman by night. Hit lady. <laughs> Hit lady. Fake it. Uh, sure. No agendas. No agendas. No, never. <laughs> never. Um, no content. Order. 
1886. Uh, Will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on in so, Smite? Smite. We've got the first week of the qualifiers were this weekend. Um, so really cool. Some new teams to watch. Some new uh, kind of organizations. But in the end, some familiar names ended up on top. So uh, we'll start off with the NA qualifiers where first place went to Complexity. Um, they were uh, Complexity last year and uh, basically did really well, I think, through all the matches. Um, no real strange setups that I recall um, out of Complexity. And you just got to love NCON, uh, their support player. So... Well, in a lot of their teams, but I like uh, Incon and what he's uh, doing on YouTube uh, and everything else. He's really taking support to a different level, I think. So, real good job. And um, if they start up the Fantasy League again, I will probably have Incon uh, as my support player once again. So, anyways, uh, second place, uh, a familiar name, Five Angry Men. So... Uh, if you remember at the qualifiers last year, or not qualifiers, the Challenge League last year, I started saying that they were the team that was kind of up and coming, uh, made of a, of a number of former DIG members, um, so DIG, Dignitas members. They now have another one, um, as Snipe went over there uh, to Five Ingram as well. And uh, they did quite well. Shing, sorry. Uh, they did quite well. Um, let's see. Third place, what's cracking? Um, however, they've they've now been picked up by Cognitive Gaming, so they are your new cog. Um, but that's a a team made up of a number of really well, kind of highly placed ranked player. Um, probably their yeah. their person to watch is Mask um, out of the jungle, um, and he does uh, insanely well as yeah, well. Yeah, he was like number one ranked last season. So a bunch yeah. of pub stars. But um, he actually just came back from a ban because yeah. he was uh, throwing games so people couldn't overtake him. <laughs> Correct. On his alt. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So he just got off a ban and he's now doing quite well again. So what's cracking or cognitive gaming as we go to the next one. Uh, and then in fourth was Team Eager. This is the rebranded... Um, team that was formerly known as Team Dignitas. Uh, so it's your Lassus, your Zapman, um, Anatoly. and Anatoly's back. Nah, in and Dead Care. Yeah, Dead Care and Naw. So that team is uh, also well positioned. I actually thought that they were going to uh, place a little higher. Uh, their match against Five Aven Green Men, they actually started off with the first six kills. And then, unfortunately, I had to leave. So they were up 6-0. I'm like, oh, yeah, they've got it. Team Dig, whatever. I mean, Team Eager. Uh, you know know them. Once they start snowballing, they usually finish it out. But later on, I found out that Five Angry Men actually won. So, wow. unfortunately, I missed the rest of that one. And I have not been able to find it on YouTube yet. So I don't know if Smite Pro has posted those games yet. Um, switching over to the EU side, we have uh, first place going to Trig Esports. Uh, these are mainly uh, TSM from last year. And um, Fnatic. Yes. Oh, true. Shadow Nightmare, uh, and Zalia, Fombolo, so. Trix Tank, yep. and Cubo Fred. And, no, not Shadow Nightmare. It was, um, yeah, the TSM mid. Um, Lo Lobster. Yeah. Yeah. So, good stuff from them. Um, they took out Panthera, which is Iraffer's new team. Um, so, he was on Mortality Esports last year. That team kind of, like, completely yeah. disintegrated. In fact, not all of them are even in the Smite scene anymore. Um, so, it's good to see him not only get a new team, but a new team that's uh, doing really well. It's a bit weird, though, because he was last year, he was playing Jungle, has now moved over to the... Um, like support lane support. and in the final of jungles. the qualifiers he played two assassins played Thanatos. Yeah. Thanatos and Thor and they're like they've got some CC like Thor has a stun and Thanatos has a silence but he didn't really do well and no. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't. It seems weird. I think you should. I think they should go. I think you should Force go back Lord. to um, jungle and maybe pick up Half Devil. Um, yeah, he's on one of he's on one of the lower ranking teams, so I don't think he'll do anything. Yeah. But I think he's a really good support. Well, and then there's always Aurora. I don't think he was on Fat Chunks last year. So he's uh, American. No, but he's American, but plays on the EU servers and I think the Chinese servers too. So he's yeah, got but there's difference. Together. There's They're difference right. between playing, playing competitively on ranked on different servers. Yeah. Than there is um, just playing think, ranked. I think Aurora may be a sub on EU right like, now. Honestly, I I could I could do ranked with you on. On e on my like NA and I have no mm -hmm. problems, but if we wanted to do comp, well, even in tournaments, I could probably perform better than everyone else who on our team. But <laughs> <laughs> even with all, because our team, like even when I even when I play ADCs, like I still get, I think I got like twenty kills the other day in an assault. No, in yeah. in arena, <laughs> just as an ADC, which is all auto attacks and stuff. So I don't know, <laughs> but you can. Yeah. All right, so third place, um, just to pick up where we were, uh, Team Dignitas. So this is the new Team Dignitas, and I can't remember all the people on this new team. It's um, I know it's Young Bay's the captain who was uh, the the old captain for C9, C9. who C9 yep. who are now the world champions, Cognitive Prime. <laughs> yep. So it's all it's all changing. Yeah, all changing weird. Stuff. Um, speaking of all changing, uh, the fourth team, uh, fourth place finisher was London Conspiracy. This is um, Sun, God, Sun Touch. Sun Touch's new team, yeah. uh, where he's now playing mid. So I think congratulations, Sun Touch. He's now played competitively in every single role in Smite. Um, nice. Uh, just going from team to team. In fact, I think he was ADC last year for Potato Boys. Yep. If you remember them, and uh, before that, I can't remember the teams that he was on, but he was on C9 originally yeah. as well. So, good stuff. Um, expect a lot of good teams. Um, there's a good thread on Reddit that was started by Zapman saying that they need to expand the season this year um, because of the number of good teams from a six team SPL to an eight team SPL. Uh, so feel free and jump in on the Smite um, Reddit channel or subreddit if you also want eight what, teams. What do you think about that? Because as I remember last season, there didn't seem that many off weeks leading up to the um, the World Championship after the SPL. You know, there didn't seem that many off weeks where they could have filled it with a few more games. Really? Longer maybe? days. Uh, I think they definitely were starting much earlier this year. Yeah. So I think it's it's easier to fill those in. But if you look at it, I mean, EU really had eight competitive teams last year. Yeah. You know, it was it was horrible to see um, Aquila. I mean, not Aquila. They were Agilitas at that time, and Potato Boys just rip through the Challengers Cup where. Um, Agilitas won every single match yeah. that they played in Challengers Cup, and Potato Boys won every single match except for the one that they played against Agilitas. Um, both of those teams deserve to be in the SPL last season, and I'm kind of for the eight, eight teams just because when you look at where the cutoff was, it really was that eight, nine teams um, that were really deserving to be in that top. Yeah. But then you looked at NA, and that was a lot closer between, like, four or five teams. Yeah. So, you know, um, the guys who qualified for the NA um, regionals, like, got trounced. Compared to, you know, Agilitas, who went all the way and came second overall <laughs> in the World yeah. Championship. So... Mm -hmm. No, um, I, I don't disagree. I, I, no, I, definitely, I definitely think that there's room for eight teams, and you know maybe next year we go up to ten as, as Smite grows. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I also like the idea of not jumping before we can walk, and we've just started walking. We've had a pretty solid start of last year. Let's kind of grow on it but not push too much. Yeah. 
I, I don't disagree. It's just I think they've got room for the. Um, but also, you all. know, you have to say if they introduce say four more teams overall, that's twenty more people who have to start making a living from Smite to be able to commit to doing um, SPL. You know, uh, Thirst suffered last year uh, for one reason, yeah. because some of their players couldn't play on certain days because of work and all that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. obviously, the more teams involved means more people, and more people means more people have to start making sacrifices. And like, if you're one of these teams that kind of finish sixth or fifth, you know, you don't stand a chance of beating Cognitive or, uh, sorry, C9 or um, <laughs> Titan there. Like, yeah. How are you going to make enough money from finishing fifth or sixth to be able to put the time in to say I'm a professional smite player if you're not going to get monetary rewards? And, you know, as much as I, you know, smite's growing, a lot of the money that seems to come from smite have gone to the same kind of 20 players, maybe. Yeah. You know, you're looking yeah. at the TSM the old Dignitas, and then the two yeah. cognitive teams. So I, I, I'm really sceptical on whether we've got the growth there at the minute. While it is growing, you know, and Xbox is going to play a big part of that huge. as well. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next year would be the time to push instead of, you know, instead of even eight, just go straight to ten or something. I don't know, we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah. We'll see. It'll yeah. It's a good discussion either way, and I, I, you know, I just always want to see more Smite, so I enjoy it. It's great yeah. esports. I definitely admit, like, I had missed watching competitive Smite. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's tough. So, and I want to bring back the fantasy. ESL, bring back your Smite fantasy leagues, <laughs> even I'm for qualifiers. I'm, I'm good. sure it's coming. <laughs> But, all right, that's going to do it for our sports section today, and we'll jump into feedback where we actually have something. So, I'll go ahead and start us off first. A friend and the guild leader of the Defense of the Patients Dota 2 guild, Easy Merkizi, or I believe it's actually supposed to be pronounced Easy Merks, uh, he reached out to me and wanted to thank everyone for the great general gaming podcast and wanted me to let everyone know he's really enjoying the show. So, I'm I use that in the feedback section to pass along his message to you guys. He's really enjoying what you guys are doing. Tells awesome. us to keep it up. Oh, it's awesome. Thank awesome. you very much. And yes, thank you. I'm going to make Mac read shit because he hasn't talked for a bit. We'll go ahead and start uh, addressing yes. some of those emails from the infamous uh, Tony Supa. Hey. <laughs> All right. Hey. hey, guys. Oh, and more Q. Yeah, I wanted to guy. push... <laughs> Wanted to push out my top 10 list for the new year. While the list isn't comprised of games exclusively, going by how much you appreciate my opinion on the show, I feel okay sharing the list. In no specific order, but hopefully I can get your opinions on my points. 10. Esports popularity. Would be nice to see gaming becoming more popular and broadcast friendly. I think Moriku made the point, and I would agree with him, that an international rules governing body would need to be in place. Mainly to put the gameplay into the, act uh, into the action, not team drama. I think back in 2011, World Cyber Games, where Dignitas engineered a win due to a lack of rules, I lost faith. Uh, oh, I think back to the 2011 World Cyber Games, where Dignitas engineered a win due to a lack of rules. I lost faith as it seemed a lot like pro wrestling opposed to pro gaming. Mm -hmm. Comments? Yeah. I'll try to continue and then I, we'll just talk about it. No, we'll just go, say CSGO. Yeah, we'll go one at a time. <laughs> I'll agree. <laughs> like CSGO. Like there I don't know if there needs to be an international governing body, but or if developers need to be more in touch with their leagues. Um yeah. but and this is kind of a thing that's going on with Valve right now, especially with Dota Two. Like there's all this talk of a players association. And the players were just, a group of players was just flown out to Seattle to have a summit of some kind to talk about things. And Valve was just basically bouncing ideas off these guys. So some change is in the works. I think overall, esports is growing in popularity. I think uh, if you look at Twitch, the numbers don't lie. Twitch is getting more viewers than cable TV is. I think. Uh, a lot of those numbers are on eSport related content, so I think eSports is definitely going to keep uh, 
coming up. We just had in Dota 2 a TI 4.5, and that raised uh, 3 million. Or well, it raised two million, but it had a three million dollar prize pool. Smite first year t over two million dollar prize pool. So I think the scene is going to start growing much more. I mean, we don't really even call cover Call of Duty or Halo here, but there is a scene for those games as well. So I think it's there's yeah. nothing but Smash. growth for esports, and it's going to be there. Yep. Uh, especially with um, with all the games coming out, um, Heroes of the Storm has already got professional teams. Yep. Um, Overwatch, like Team Fortress 2, is going to have professional players who play that game. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we talked about Battle, was it Battle Cry? Yep, or, Battle Cry for that. Um, from Bethesda, Bethesda game. Oh. That will probably have some sort of competitive scene. Strife, we don't know where that's sitting, but there will probably be professional Strife players. Um, it's just lots of things where people can have lots of tournaments and. I, I, like I said, I, I still would like some sort of governing body over all of these.